to get to the playoffs, to get to the championship, to get to the million dollars. And so excitement, excitement, excitement. And that's what PFL brings to the table. What did you think of uh, performance by Chris Wade, both those fighters on the bubble of the playoffs? Right. Lose your out, win your in. Right. Um, thoughts on that finish? Well, I mean, he obviously, you know, he had, a, uh, he had to make a statement. Like, he came out and the first thing he did was a, a flying kick, which was, a, I mean, if that landed, um, it would have been the highlight of the night, right? But, uh, no, I was happy for the, uh, you know, local boy to come out on top and actually that six points probably secure him uh, to get a spot in the playoffs, so. Yeah, look, you probably had a thousand people in the stands, so uh, it's great when uh, you know Chris has been such a great uh, advocate for us here in Long Island. Right. I mean, he's the local boy. I mean, he's just like all American apple pie. He's great, and so he came and he brought it. With and, you know, and on to, top. And yeah, and to your, I mean, to your point, you know, he had to do what he had to do. He had a tough, he had a tough loss in the first round, so he turns around and he goes and not only gets a win, but he gets six points, and now he's in the playoffs. We'll see where it sorts out, as a couple of other fights in. Uh, in the division have to take place between now and the end of the year, but you know Chris is in, and Chris is a poster boy. So uh, congrats right. to him. Absolutely, that's what PFL is all about, right? <laughs> yeah, look, uh, you know, as Ray said, uh, it, it just keeps happening. You know, we're now into PFL five. You know, we got through the first round of the regular season. We're now into the second round of the regular season, and every single one of these fighters that Ray and the team have put together, they come out, they hit their marks, they bring everything, and they get finishes. You know, we're still, even after tonight, at a 70% finish uh, for all the fights. It's incredible. And all the fans love it. Ray, I know, loves it. The team loves it. And it's because these guys want to secure a spot in the playoffs. Because if you don't get in the playoffs, you don't win a million dollars. Again, you know, as our, one of our slogans is, what do you fight for? And that's what these guys are coming out and put it all on the lines. Because they're fighting for not only to be a champion, but also to be a million dollar winner. You know what I mean? And so. I mean, again, PFL just continues to climb, and these athletes are continuing to set the bar. And so, excitement, excitement, excitement. But how about Vinny? I mean, Vinny comes out. Yeah, he's okay. You know, I mean, Vinny not only gets a huge win in the first round, and then he comes out tonight against Brandon, who also was sharp and had a big win. Right. And, you know, Vinny, you know, you, if you were listening to the broadcast, you know that he's a world champion in jiu-jitsu, but, you know, he comes out and he says, you know, guess what? I'm going to be a world champion in the PFL. He's the number one seed far and away, and he's finishing everyone. And you got to believe that he's the he's the guy that can win a million dollars. He's the favorite right now, and you'll probably see it. You know, tonight there were some odds out there on all the fights. You'll see when the odds come out for him in the quarterfinals. He's going to be the number one seed, and he's going to have the odds with him at, with all the bookmakers to see what happens to win the million dollars. Absolutely, uh, Vinny has all the talent in the world to be. I mean on the ground, nobody can touch him, you know what I mean? And then tonight he showed that he can knock people out as well and finish people. So, you know, again, uh, he's the highest seat there and, and I think uh, we're just gonna see the best of Vinny as the time to come. Now, thoughts on uh, at the weigh-ins, you lost the fight. Um, thoughts on that? Did it ruin that evening for you? Or, you know, these fights I think made up for it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, no, it didn't ruin tonight because tonight everybody came out and, and fought. So I was excited about that and happy about that. But in terms of what uh, Efren did, it was absolutely unprofessional. And I can tell you 100%, anybody that comes like that will never fight for PFL again, ever. Yeah, you know, look, if you look at the rule books, there's a reason why we put out rules and regulations. It's a league, it's a sport. And if you read the rule book, it says that if you miss weight, you don't get any points, and if the commission allows, you can fight. But if you miss weight a second time, you're out of the league. So Efren missed a weight second time. Uh, you know, I know all these guys are trying and doing their best. It's not easy to make weight, but he missed. So as a result, he doesn't fight. You know what? We still had a great night out there in the arena here in Nassau, and it didn't spoil anything. No, and uh, not. and you know, uh, and it, the way that the league is set up. Uh, Guys sometimes get a walkover and they get their win. You know, they showed up, they made weight. That's how it should work. Yeah, and you know, making weight is really important because as you go through the regular season into the playoffs, and the championship, you can't make weight on the championship. You're not fighting. You know what I mean? And the fact that he had six weeks or so to make weight, and I kept, you know, I, I kept, uh, I called him maybe two weeks ago to see what his weight was, and he said, "No, nah, that weight's great." Say I chipped up on him when he got here. Ah, weight is great, and he, he missed it by eight and a half pounds. Uh, that being said, that's said and done. 
we had a great night tonight, and uh, congrats to all our guys that fought tonight because everybody kind of put it on the line, and man, loved it. That being said, uh, as far as the playoff goes, because there's two fights in one night, is there any contingency plan if someone does miss weight, <clears throat> last minute injury, are you gonna have uh, a backup perhaps uh, ready for the card? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, obviously, uh, we're gonna have alternates there as well, but the first uh, quarter, the quarterfinal losers uh, will automatically become their first uh, alternates for the night. So I'm sure Carlos has explained this before. So if Carlos and I uh, fought and he won and I lost, but he broke his hand, then I have the opportunity to go back in there as long as I'm okay. But if he knocks me out and breaks his hand, then we're both uh, pretty much in trouble. <laughs> yeah, so it just, it rolls, it rolls down. You know, as right. you know, in the quarterfinals, there's four losers. So the highest ranked loser that's left from the original regular season, so the regular season matters, the seeding matters, right. would be available to come in as long as the commission would allow them to fight. And so it would roll down. The other thing that Ray and the team will do is they'll also bring the ninth and the 10th and the 11th and the 12th um, seed from the regular season. And they will be there, they'll need to make weight and they'll be available. They'll be sitting there waiting on the bench. And if it turned out that we had to roll all the way down through the losers, down to that ninth seed or the tenth seed, they would be available to come in for that quarterfinal lineup. So it's all been laid out. I think it's uh, very orderly. Uh, it should go smoothly. But first and foremost, the, the top eight that make the playoffs have got to make weight. That's critical. You don't make weight, an alternate's going to come in. Which has got to be a huge motivator. And not a demotivator because you want to stay on weight, you want to stay healthy, and you want right. to stay fight well, ready, which is huge when you see you know, somebody missing weight like Ethan twice, where now there's going to be some, you know, other opportunities. Look, so we, think that, the, we think that's all part of what the PFL is all about. The way we structured it from the first round to the second round to the playoff night to the championship night, everybody, all 72, these elite 72, know that they've got a season of MMA sport ahead of them. They can plan their whole season out. They can understand their nutrition, their training. They can stay on weight. It's very important that we want to help the fighters to do that so that they don't have these big yo-yos up and down and have these big losses to have to make weight. And so we think that's a big benefit of the PFL. If a million dollars doesn't motivate you, <laughs> nothing will. Uh, any truth to Adeline Greif, Olympian, around the same weight as Harrison? Any truth that she might be uh, out here, she's training MMA, making the leap over the PFL? That's the first I've heard of. Okay. I believe there are some fighters with only one fight uh, after tonight and last week. Will they be competing on a card later in the year before the postseason to get their second fight? Uh, it's, good. it's a good question. Uh, you know, example of that is Rashid. Uh, Rashid was not able to compete in the first round uh, due to a rib injury. He's now won and uh, may likely have clinched a playoff spot. I don't have it in front of me, but I believe that that's what it said. And if that's the case, then he would clinch his playoff spot and would not fight uh, because he had already missed his first round fight. And then what about a guy like Ramsey Nitchum, who I believe also has the one fight, but he lost? Yeah, Ray, Ray and the team are working on Ramsey to yeah. get him a fight on either, uh, most likely on August 30th. We just don't yet have all the clearances yet. Right. Sean as well? <clears throat> Sean, correct. He's also uh, fighting August 30th. Yeah, Sean will be on the card August 30th. Matter of fact, there's six light heavyweights that will be on the card August 30th. Yeah, so there's still a few moving parts yeah. uh, in that in the clinching of that top eight that'll happen on August 30th. You know, we designed the regular season to have three fights in the first round and four fights in the second round for just that reason, so that there would be some variation if we needed to get fighters, if they needed a week or two, if there were